Welcome to this video on mechanical gauging and measuring. We're going to discuss how to use mechanical tram gauges and self-centering gauges to measure all three dimensions on a vehicle body. That's right, all three dimensions. It's a common misconception that you cannot measure three dimensions mechanically, but that's not true. As you can see with the equipment on this board, we can measure all three dimensions on a body, very similar to how this electronic system here would measure all three dimensions on a vehicle body. Let's start off by reviewing the measurements for this vehicle. We are going to have a look at the upper body measurements as seen here, which shows us under hood and all the openings. Those are all point to point. This next diagram is of the underbody, which shows us on the upper half point to point measurements and on the lower half all of the parallel to data measurements. We'll discuss a little bit later on how to utilize those two halves of the sheet and on the right side we'll see all the measuring points corresponding to a letter for each of those sections. This is what the computer screen would look like as we select these areas to print if you choose to print them. The alternative is to actually record all of your measurements in the software. That way you can record all of the preliminary measurements beforehand and then record the measurements after you've done the corrections to the vehicle. And that's a great way for record keeping professionally all of the work that you've done on the vehicle. Here we have two mechanical tram gauges. The one in the green box is a conventional mechanical tram gauge. The one in the red box is a digital tram gauge. The difference is the digital tram gauge will give a digital measuring for the readout of the length. However, there are some limitations. That does, however, create some convenience during the measuring process. When using a tram gauge to measure point to point, make sure that the pointers on each end of the tram gauge are equal in length. This is important or else your measurement will be off. So here we are measuring the lengths with a measuring tape to ensure accuracy. Once we have the length of the pointer set, then we can set the tram gauge to the correct dimension for the vehicle. So I'm measuring with a measuring tape from the outside of one pointer to the inside of the next pointer. We can also go inside to outside. This is necessary to compensate for the width of the pointer. You could measure from the point to the point, but it is much more difficult. Notice how the pointer sits on the center of the stud. If you're measuring a hole, make sure that the pointer sits centered in the hole and is not too big as seen here. If the pointer is too big for the holes, we can put an end on the pointer to prevent it from going into the hole. However, if we are using these ends, we have to make sure that both pointers on the tram gauge use the same part or else we could make the measurement off because it does change the length of the pointer ends. Here I am doing a point-to-point -point measurement under hood on this vehicle. I am making sure that the pointers are centered on the bolt heads. I've also ensured previously that those ends are equal length. I have not, however, preset the length or width, if you prefer, of the actual tram gauge. The reason I did that is so that I can measure this particular length rather than compare it to the actual length that it's supposed to be. So what I've done now is lock the tram gauge into the dimension I measured. I'm now double checking with the measuring tape towards the ends of the pointers to ensure accuracy. And then I will record that measurement and compare it to what the measurement is supposed to be on the vehicle. With this vehicle, I have a tolerance of plus or minus three millimeters. You'll notice that I measured 1,310 millimeters as compared to the 1,308. That means this dimension is two millimeters longer, but still within that plus or minus three millimeter spec. Body opening measurements are noted here, and we can see that there are letters designating the measuring points. They are showing notches in this case on the body, and I found the notches here in the opening. Then I'm going to take the tram gauge and put the tram gauge into these notches that I've found on the body. Sometimes these can be rather vague uh, or difficult to find points. So I'm going to take the tram gauge and place it in these two points and measure my opening. This can be particularly useful if the vehicle is in a side hit. You may or may not want to preset the tram gauge depending on your preference. Moving on to the underbody, we need to find the body zero points, which are designated by these triangles. So here we can see the letters K and N representing those body zero points, which have been highlighted in blue. Now, why do we want to note those? We want to note those because those are the areas that we want to measure first, which help us to measure the center section, if you remember the principle of separating the vehicle into front, center, and rear sections. Using the legend on the chart, I was able to locate these holes. 
Some software will tell us where these holes are by showing us pictures, or they'll show us pictures of any other measuring points too, which can be handy. I've removed the plugs from these holes. However, this last plug in the right rear corner is a little bit challenging as I have not removed the plug yet. I will need to reposition the arm for the hoist to do this particular spot. I've highlighted that center section here. Again, the center section is critical and should always be the first area we measure. And we should always do point to point measurements before we start measuring for height from the datum. Have a look here. I've recorded all of the measurements that we did point to point. You'll see that most of these measurements are within the plus or minus three millimeter specification. You can record your measurements on the sheet as I have done, or on the side, the back, or another piece of paper. Or, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you could also record them in the software. So in this particular case, since we are using Mitchell, we do have that ability. Longer point-to-point -point measurements can be challenging, so here I'm asking Rob if he'll come over and give me a hand. So Rob is going to give me a hand holding this tram gauge. As I do those long measurements, the tram gauge can be very hard to hold, and it can be almost impossible to tell if both ends are centered properly in the holes or on the bolt heads. So here we are setting this in the holes, and then I'm tightening the gauge so that I can remove it and then measure with the measuring tape to determine the actual length of this dimension. Adding a third pointer to the tram gauge turns it into a trammel or tracking gauge, which allows us to measure two dimensions. Those would be height and length or height and width. And what that does is allows us to measure those two dimensions simultaneously, whereas a typical two pointer tram gauge only measures length or width. Here we are placing the gauge on the vehicle. If the pointers fit in the holes, then we are good. If not, then we will have a visual indication of any height misalignment and or length or width misalignment on the vehicle. We can then measure and record those dimensions on our sheet. As we transition into parallel data measurements, this is a good time to note to check your equipment for damage as seen here. Those will give you false readings. The ends of the self-centering gauges need to be hung from the points you're measuring from. So if this is the hole we're measuring from, that roll pin could fit nicely into that hole to hold the gauge. There is another end with a smaller roll pin that can slide onto the opposite end of that piece, which has a hole in it. So we pull this pin out and slide it into the end, as you can see here. And then that smaller roll pin will fit into the hole or other place that you're trying to hang the gauge from. The small roll pin is great for fitting into small holes. Just make sure it fits tight to the end or edge of the hole. We have several other ends that can fit into this area as well. So we're going to remove this particular one, and then we're going to slide another end on that can also hang out of holes. This one's very common and works very well for most average sized holes underneath the vehicle. Set this one in the hole and it should hold the gauge in place. As you can see, it can work in small holes or large holes. We will remove this particular end, and we have another end we can put on here as well that can work in some circumstances. So this other end we're putting on is a magnet. This magnet can fit on a bolt head or anywhere that's magnetic underneath the vehicle. Make sure the magnetic end is strong enough, otherwise it could fall off the vehicle. I generally do not recommend using these ends unless you absolutely have to use those particular spots. The next end that we have on here is another one that may not be used very often, and that has this pin on the end. This pin can actually go outside the rocker panel and fit between the door and the rocker, holding the gauge in place. One thing to note with this particular centering gauge is the centering gauge does not actually have to be hung from the hole that you're measuring from. It just has to be hung on areas that are symmetrical on both sides of the body and stable. So long as when we hang it, we're measuring from the correct measuring point. You can hang it from anywhere symmetrical, but must measure from your correct measuring point. We always have to measure from the correct measuring point, be it a hole, bolt, or something else, regardless of how the gauge is hung. In this case, we're measuring from a hole. One end of the measuring tape is on the edge of the hole. The other end of the measuring tape, as you can see with the red arrow, is pointing to a particular spot on the centering gauge. It doesn't matter where in the centering gauge we measure to, as long as it's a fixed point, and that all of the measurements are taken to the same spot on the gauges. You could measure to the yellow or orange bar, top or bottom, provided that you're doing the same thing on all bars. If you do not do that and you're not consistent, you will have inaccurate datum measurements.
To use the center and gauges, we're going to refer to the parallel to data measurements. I am referencing the point to point up top though, because I want to set the first two gauges at those body zero points. My datum will not clear the vehicle, so I'm going to add 100 millimeters to each point manually. So as you can see here, I've taken the measurement, 166 millimeters, added 100 to get 266. To prepare the center and gauge, I'm going to take the center and gauge in my two hands and push both parts towards the center as seen here. And what that does is allow the gauge to center. So when I pull one side out, the other side pulls out equally. Then I'll insert the ends into the gauges so that these can hang from the vehicle. These ends clip in here, and then there's a screwed section where I can screw the end in to hold those parts in securely. And then the hangers will go in the end as we showed those earlier in the video. So use an appropriate hanger for the hole you're going into. This is why we prepared earlier by checking the ends, checking the holes we're going in, and ensuring that we have all the equipment we need to make this work successfully. One thing to note, the center engage has a yellow and orange line on it. You'll see that one side is yellow, one side is orange. When we hang these, as you can see the yellow here, we will try and hang them so that one side is one way, one's the other, and then we'll alternate them. So in this case, I'm putting the yellow side towards the front of the car, meaning the gauge that goes next to it will have the orange towards the front of the car. When you sight the gauges later, it makes it easier to see. So I've hung the gauges in the hole on the vehicle, and now I'm going to measure to ensure that the gauge is at the correct height. So this is what I was showing earlier in the video. We want to make sure that we measure from the hole the gauge is in to a fixed point on the gauge. Again, it doesn't matter what fixed point you're measuring to, so long as every gauge on the vehicle is measured to the same fixed point on the gauge. So again, you can measure to the top of the yellow or orange line, the bottom of the yellow or orange line. You can measure to the ends, the brackets there in the corner. It doesn't matter as long as it's the same fixed point on each gauge. So as we're hanging these gauges here and we're checking these points, we're gonna go back and double and triple check. This is one of the most critical steps when using these centering gauges is double checking your measurements. Most likely if you use these gauges, you will encounter an instance where you have not measured these accurately enough and you are gonna see a little bit of difference in the height dimension on the vehicle where it's not actually damaged, it's just an incorrectly set gauge. So again, take your time, double check these measurements, and ensure the gauge is sitting securely in those holes. Once we have the gauge set to a uh, place that we're satisfied with, we will tighten all of those lock screws on the two ends, and there are lock screws towards the center that we will tighten as well to make sure the gauge does not fall out of the vehicle. So tighten these ones as seen here. This will ensure the gauge is secure, and again, will not fall. If these fall, they will become damaged. The gauges can be removed if necessary for the repair. While a minimum of three centering gauges are necessary, we are hanging four on this vehicle to ensure we get each section. So as noted, we have placed them in the body zero points in the center, and then we're also putting one at the front and one at the rear to get the four control points. Four gauges hung on this vehicle. So you'll see over here now we have four gauges hung on the vehicle, and that's what four centering gauges will look like. Although it may be hard to see the colors, they are alternated between orange and yellow, which makes it easier for us to view those gauges. The last gauge to go on is the strut tower gauge. So we're referencing our measurements here, and I'm looking for big numbers, numbers that stand out. Those are generally spots where we can hang a strut tower gauge from the upper body. And then I'm gonna reference these measuring points here on the legend to see if they tell me the top of the body. So it might say a fender bolt, strut tower bolt. And notice how up here, it uh, looks like B, F, and H are missing from underbody measurements from point to point, which means that they transfer to the upper body. So here we'll see those points B, F, and H. We have rat support bolt, fender bolt, and our strut tower. Uh, bolt. So the strut tower bolt is actually the front bolt on the strut, which gives us a width measurement as seen there. So that's point H. So we're going to prepare this gauge to hang on the strut tower. So here's an assembled strut tower gauge, and we have to get a few things put in here before it can go on the car. There are these pointers here which will balance on the strut tower, and the short one lines right up with the bracket. And notice how the longer one is longer than the bracket, which means if we use the short one, we can measure from that bracket corner, making life easier for us, fewer measurements. However, you may need the long pointer to clear the fenders of the vehicle. Always try to use the short one if possible, but if you do need to use the long one, consider that measurement.
Once we get those installed in here, we're going to look at the numbers. And so these numbers start at zero from the center and work outwards. And if you looked at the under hood dimensions, they showed us the numbers the same way. They showed us the width divided into two sections. So we're going to match those numbers here. If the measurements on the vehicle didn't give us that split number, we'd just divide it by two if the vehicle is symmetrical. There we go. So now we have our width set up on the two pointers, which will hang off of the front bolts here. So we are hanging those off of those two front bolts right there. Those pins will sit on and it will actually balance itself. So once those two pins are applied to the studs of that strut, you will see that gravity will help hold and balance that strut tower gauge in place. Once this is in place here, all I need to do is add the bottom bar and then I can adjust that bottom bar for datum height. So I've referred back to the chart to get the datum height for the strut tower gauge. I've added the 100 millimeters to the strut tower gauge. This will be useful for sighting the upper body, specifically the strut towers when viewing the lower body. Now that all of the gauges are hung, I can begin to view the underbody. So here we have our strut tower gauge hanging from the top and you'll see that underneath we have a bar similar to the centering gauges. We have center pins which we will line up and we can use one eye to view the center pins. If the center pins all line up, then that helps us to determine if there is a width misalignment or not. And then what we do is adjust our height to look at the bars from each other. So we'll move at an angle to check. If there's a height misalignment, we will see them between the bars. This is an example of a height misalignment. So we will see that on the front left rail, there is sag. The front left rail is sagging down and we can see between the bars, it does not line up with the bars behind it. And this is an example of twist where we can see sag in the opposite corners going through the entire vehicle. So notice the gap between the bars. If we wanted to measure this, we could set the bars by eye until they're level and then measure the difference in height using a measuring tape as when we set the bars up. This is an example of sway in the back of the vehicle. Notice how the one pin does not line up with the other pins. While accurate measuring is important, sometimes we just need to do a quick measurement to verify something. And you can use a measuring tape by yourself to measure from point to point. However, the measuring tape won't be as accurate because we cannot get it centered on bolts, holes, etc. And the measuring tape does bend and flex as you can see here in the video. But this might be a good quick thing to do in the parking lot with a customer to verify damage. To measure accurately from these bars, other than eyeballing it, you could run a straight edge or a taut string and then measure from the string for either length, width, or height. And that will give you the exact measurement in a specific spot around a certain hole. So although we are eyeballing these gauges, just consider that the eyeballing is to give us a visual reference, but we can still measure from these bars or straight edge across the bars or straight edge across the pin to give us our precise measurements. And that is how we can measure all three dimensions, length, width, and height accurately with this system.